Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to, uh, here we're, we're going to learn how to connect to a uh, Raspberry Pi from a Mac. So we're running OS X on a, a MacBook Pro here, and we're going to use this to uh, SSH into our Raspberry Pi. So first we need to, we need to be able to find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi on the network, and then we're going to SSH into it um, using the terminal. So um, if you look over here, I've actually, I have it, I have it displayed right here. The IP is 192.168.0.231. Now before you do any of this, you're going to want to make sure you're on the same network as your Raspberry Pi, in this case, the same Wi-Fi network. So if you see here, I'm connected to TreeFrog 5G. So that's the same wireless network my Raspberry Pi is on. So um, I had some issues with the, uh, with the OS X network utility you see down here. And I, I ended up deciding not to use that. And I just downloaded the first free tool that I found on the App Store. And that ended up being this tool that they just call IP Scanner. So that's not a very brandable name or, or, and it doesn't really set it apart. It's kind of a generic name, just says what it does. But um, this is the icon for it over here, and this is the name and the version. So you should be, should be able to find that pretty easily on the App Store. Just search for Port Scanner on the, on the App Store and you'll find this. But you'll notice it shows my Raspberry Pi here, and this is the, the IP address I just ran, read off. And the, the, the neat thing is, is that this actually, like um, a lot of port scanners, you'll have to specify the, you know, the IP range and the, the ports and all, all, sorts of, all sorts of parameters. With, with this, you don't. You don't, have, you don't have to specify the network or anything. I didn't even have to click a button for it to start going. It, I basically just, um, so yeah, I didn't even click a button for, to, for it to start. Basically, as soon as I launched this application, it, um, as soon as I launched the application, it basically started scanning IP addresses on my network. I just decided which network to use because there only really was one network. And um, it just started scanning and finding devices, which, which was pretty nice. Um, so, so uh, and it, it also identified it as a Raspberry Pi right here. And it, it does that based on, um, primarily based on the MAC address, I believe. But that, that was pretty nice. Some, some port scanners don't do that. They just tell you the IPs. Some do, some don't. So, but um, th this, this was actually pretty nice. I, I like this. It makes it really obvious which one is the Raspberry Pi. So I, I would recommend this tool. Um, Anyway, so now that we know the IP, we can put it over here in our terminal, which I already have open. And um, let, let me just uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, I apologize if you are, um, if, if you're watching this on your phone or something, this will be, probably be harder to see the screen, but um, all, all of that would have been kind of difficult, but you, you probably get the idea of what's, what's going on. But um, if you're watching on a PC, I think you're probably fine. Um, anyways. So SSH into it, we basically say SSH, you know, after opening up a terminal, um, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. If you happen to not be familiar with the terminal or the command line on Mac OS, not all Mac users are, um, it's this app here at the bottom called terminal. If you don't have it, you know, just, just go to the launch pad and you'll find it in here pretty easily. Um, you know, every, every Mac should have it. So any, anyways, open up your terminal. And it, it'll be a different color for you by default, unless you've configured it. But um, for, for me, I've, I've got this green on black, but um, it's, it's the same app. But, but anyways, um, once you're in your terminal, you type SSH to use Secure Shell, and then you type the IP address you're trying to SSH into. In this case, it's the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So hit enter, and now it's, it comes up with this little warning saying, hey, we don't recognize the fingerprint for this host. And the reason it does that is because this is the first time we're connecting to the host. Now, the second time we connect to it, it'll recognize. So we're, we're here we're gonna say yes. And now um, we, we type in our password, we say, uh, and uh, there we go. So, and in this, hold on, oh yeah, so, uh, I should have, yeah, so I'm doing that wrong. Um, in, anyways, the second time you log in, um, it's not gonna show that. It, it, I failed this time, but the second successful time, I'll, I'll show you. So the first thing I did wrong was I have to specify the user that I'm logging in as. So you say pi at. 
So whatever your username is, you say username at IP address or host name. So username at IP address or username at IP I, yeah, IP or the host, yeah, what, basically after the at sign, you'll either have a host name or an IP address. And the username comes before the at sign. <clears throat> so this is what the syntax looks like for that. So just hit enter and uh, type in the password. And I think I typed, I, I did type that in wrong. I'm, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I, I, again, so um, let's see here. I typed my normal password instead of my Raspberry Pi password. And there you go, you see we're logged into our Raspberry Pi. Now I'm gonna exit out of here and SSH back into this. And um, you'll notice the second time SSHing back in, it's not, at, it's not bringing up that thing about the fingerprint because it's already recorded the fingerprint, it's not the first time. So it, it recognizes the host. And um, the, the, the reason that's important is like, say if someone were trying to impersonate your server on the network to steal your password or something, they, they might do that and um, the fingerprint wouldn't match. And if the fingerprint doesn't match after you've already connected to the host before, that might be like a red flag that someone's trying to impersonate your server. You might have a hacker on your network or something. But um, in this case, it's just because uh, and the first time we logged in, it's just because we don't have the fingerprint to, to begin with. And other other things that can come up might be like you cleared out, um, you know, your 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 known hosts file on 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 uh, your system or, or something like that. But there are other reasons that can come up. But anyways, when it says that, just say yes. And um, so here I am SSH into my Raspberry Pi from my from my Mac, and um, so we can say like. Uh, uname a and you can confirm yeah this is linux running on our raspberry pi um you know this is the processor and architecture and all that um uptime you see it's been up for three days it's just sitting there plugged in connected to my wi-fi no keyboard and monitor i'm just connecting to it remotely from like all my different devices um and um let's see what else should we look at cat proc cpu info yeah, so those are information about our CPUs. We got four, four cores on here running an ARM, ARM version seven processor. The actual name of the processor. Let's see if it. Uh, I believe this is the system on a chip, and it's not actually telling us the actual name of our processor. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter for now. Yeah, it, it this just shows our processor information. Um, it, I'm just, I'm basically just poking around in the on the CLI for now. But yeah, so that, that's pretty much it. We're logged into our Pi. Um, say if you wanted to like edit code or something, um, let's say edit our, this is um, you know the code that, the Python code that makes our lead blink. So um, you can do all this from the command line with your, uh, you know, logged in remotely over SSH on the command line. So you can, you know, write code to make your lead blink or control your Raspberry Pi or do whatever you want. You can also get a remote desktop on your Raspberry Pi using VNC, but we're not gonna cover that in this video. Um, in any case, one thing I should mention is to, you know, before you attempt to SSH into your Raspberry Pi, you're gonna wanna make sure you have it set up on the network and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you, you have enabled SSH on your Raspberry Pi. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm making this video as a standalone video by itself, but I'm also going to include this video as part of a much larger video on how to set up your Pi. And um, the much larger video is going to, um, it's uh, in, in that video, I'm gonna show you how to actually, you know, configure your Pi on the network and, uh, uh, enable SSH on your Raspberry Pi. But, um, so if you're looking at, if you're watching this clip on the, the standalone video just for how to do this on a Mac, then you won't see that part. But if you're you're watching this video as part of the larger video, then you, you will have probably already watched how to, how to enable SSH on your Pi. So depending on which one you're on, you might wanna go back and check the other video. So if you're on the, the Mac only video, you might wanna check the video for all the platforms because at the beginning of that, I, I show you how to actually enable SSH on your Pi. Unless you know, already know how to do that and in, in which case you're covered. But um, yeah, so that's pretty, pretty much it. That's, that's everything we wanted to cover today. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you like this video, found it useful, give me a thumbs up. 
Um, you have any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say, leave a comment down below. And, um, you know, I, I want to know what you think. I want to, you know, tell me how you feel. Um, you, you know, hit the, if you like this content, you want to see more things like this, um, hit the subscribe button. Um, also hit the little bell icon so you see, you'll get a little alert when I put out a new video. And um, other than that, um, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll, we'll see you next time.